What's up everybody, my name is Dwight and welcome back to GeForce Garage. Today we are going to be building something super using the enormous Inwin Z Tower and our brand new GeForce RTX 2080 Super graphics card. To celebrate the release of the GeForce RTX 2080 Super, we wanted to build something extravagant to match its aesthetics and performance. To go along with it, we have the Intel i9-9900K CPU and 32 gigs of Trident Z Royal RAM. We went with the silver to match the whole look of the case. For storage, we have a 1TB M.2 Samsung 970 Pro, and that's all going to be going on a Z390 motherboard. But we are not using any Z390 motherboard. This is the Aorus Extreme Water Force from Gigabyte, which comes with a custom mono block for the CPU and the VRM. For the water cooling, we have a pump reservoir combo from Corsair's Hydro X series, while the radiator fittings and tubing is all from EK. To power it all, we have a Corsair HX850 power supply, and it's all going to be going inside of the Z Tower from Inwin Signature Series. This is an open air chassis that's made from molded aluminum, and I think it's going to look great with the updated shroud. <laughs> Well, it's all put together. Working inside of an open air chassis has a couple of additional challenges. The main thing being the cable management. That's why I decided to go with an OEM kit from Mainframe Customs to try to make the back of the case look as beautiful as the front. I also decided to use some high performance fans up top from Noctua, but because of that, there is no LEDs up there. So I grabbed a set of Fantex Halo fan frames to just throw a little bit of light up in the top of the case. I also went with this green UV coolant because it matches the Super logo almost dead on. And if I had more time, I would have liked to dial in the UV lights a little bit more and actually go with hardline tubing to try to match the curves of the case. Other than that, it actually went together fairly easily. Anyways, let's go see how well it performs. Starting off in 3D Mark, we scored an 11,452. And in Port Royal, their ray tracing benchmark, we scored a 6,830. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, on the highest settings at 4K with DLSS turned on, we got an average of 64 frames per second. In Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus at 4K on their Uber preset, we stayed around 110 FPS on average. And lastly, in Division 2 on their Ultra preset at 4K, we hovered around 60 FPS during self, who has been doing a ton of overclocking on the 20 series cards to the extent where you're actually Frankensteining your own cards to beat people in an overclocking competition that you've been doing. Yeah, when these cards come out, they don't typically have a, a block available to it immediately. So we had to kind of come up with our own solutions and that's what we did here. <laughs> Not the prettiest, but definitely gets the job done. Yeah. But now we have a set of the EK Vector RTX 2080 Ti blocks, and we're going to be doing that inside of your legendary Skunk Works PC. This is the centerpiece of my channel. It's designed to grow as the channel grows. There's nothing practical about it. It's a little big and over the top, kind of like me. And obviously with the new graphics card launch, it was perfect time for me to kind of do a complete overhaul. And we're going to top it off today with the uh, 20 series, obviously. Nice, and then what did you upgrade to? So now we have an X299 with a 7960X. We're gonna have the same 64 gigs of Dominator Special Edition in there. We've got the new EK Velocity RGB block, and then the rest of it, all the water cooling stays the same. Cool stream rads, this is the PE, top and bottom. Of course, it's all crammed into a Case Labs SMA8, which is a little bit more nostalgic now than it was, considering, unfortunately, the company is no longer producing cases. And so I'm kind of excited to update this and, and start playing on it again. I haven't had the honor of water cooling a 20 series card yet. I've done plenty of 10 series and a bunch before that as well. So I'm really curious to see how you go about doing this because it is a new shroud design. Yeah, and uh, I'm curious too, because it's my first time doing it the right way. <laughs> So here's a new 2080 Ti RTX card from NVIDIA. This is a Founders Edition card.
The new Founders 2080 Ti looks great, but obviously we're going to be water cooling this today using the EK Vector block specifically meant for the 2080 Ti. So the first thing we have to do is actually remove the back plate off of our Founders Edition card. And to do that, we are going to remove all of these small silver Phillips head screws from the back plate. Now before removing the four larger screws surrounding the core right here, you need to remove these two screws that are closer to the actual PCIe bracket. These are going to be a little bit larger. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and remove the four spring-loaded screws on the back of the back plate. Now we're going to remove the three larger black screws that are on the PCIe bracket. Okay, now that all of those screws are loose, uh, we're going to go ahead and peel our back plate off. But before we do that, you need to be careful because there are some wire connections underneath here. So you don't want to rip it apart too quickly. You sort of want to wiggle it back and forth. And as you can see, you also have some thermal pads that are on the back plate. So you want to be mindful of those and where they went. And now that we've got the back plate off, you can see that there are four millimeter standoff bolts that are holding the cooler to the PCB. So those have to go next. Now I recommend starting from the portion around the core, the four that are on the middle of the card and then working your way outward from there. Now it's important to keep in mind while doing this, there are a ton of SMCs on the back of this PCB. So you wanna be careful, take your time and be gentle so you don't accidentally break one of these off. So once all the back screws are removed, you're ready to separate the cooler. Now you wanna be careful because there is a connector on the back of the card right here and there's not a lot of slack. So be very gentle, wiggle it back and forth. And when it comes apart, there's one connector on the back of the PCB and there's not a lot of slack on that. So you wanna be very careful. Reach in there with either your fingers or a piece of plastic. Once you do that, the card is ready to accept its water block. All right, so now we gotta clean this PCB and get it ready for the water block. So I just peel off all of the thermal pads. Some are gonna to stick to the cooler, some are gonna to stick to the card. I basically just stick them wherever they go back on the cooler in case for some reason I ever have to replace this cooler back on the card. So we're going to use some isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol and we are going to now clean off as much of this thermal material as we can. If it gets all over the sides, don't freak out. This is a non-conductive thermal paste that's used from the factory. It just gets a little bit messy. We also are going to remove any of this blue stuff. We want this to be as clean as possible so when we apply our new thermal paste, it's all fresh. So now that the core is all clean, we're gonna go ahead and hit the areas that we're gonna be applying thermal pads to. So we wanna clean off the chokes. We wanna do a little bit of alcohol on each one of the memory modules, that way the thermal pads can stick. We're gonna do the same thing on the back of the PCB as well. Because there were thermal pads back here, there's going to be thermal grease left behind. So you just wanna gently wipe off any of the shiny spots. But again, be mindful of all these semiconductors on the back. You don't wanna damage anything on the PCB. So for these cards, we're gonna be using not only the EK vector water block, which is a full cover block, we're also going to be using one of the EK back plates. And inside there, you're going to find all your thermal pads, all your screws, and then you need to follow the QR code for the actual installation manual. One of the things that's different here with the new vector series from EK is the way the flow works through the block. So instead of all of the flow going one direction through the core, it now goes directly down on the hottest part of the core and then splits off from there around the memory as well as around the VRM or the power delivery. So you're getting a very good high flow rate with a uh, very efficient design in terms of flow. You have one wire that actually runs up to the manifold right here as well as another wire that comes up uh, and connects to your actual RGB header. So you wanna make sure that these are not going to be in the way as you're test fitting this on your graphics card. So you're gonna find three different sets of thermal pads here. One's a one millimeter thick, which will be used on the power delivery. And then you have some individually cut thermal pads here that are specifically for the memory modules. Once your thermal pads are in place, you need to make sure that you peel off the protective blue backing material. This, if you leave it on, will cause you overheating problems. It's easier to take something pointy like a razor blade and just sort of scrape it. And then once it comes off, you can just peel the rest. So now we need to take this single thermal pad and we need to cut it basically into four strips. We're gonna be applying it to these chokes, these chokes, and then the MOSFETs next to them on either side. So we have to take this one strip and cut it into four. 